Today we're here to answer any questions you have about pedals and amps. You can ask any questions you like as well, but keep in mind, and we'll just move this real quick, but keep in mind you have a professional amp and pedal builder right here next to you, or next to me. So if you have questions, this would be a good time to ask him. He builds a uh, Lawrence Petros design pedals. Now you can go to his website right now. It's a LPD or Lawrence Petros design pedals, right? Uh, and check out his pedals. Very nice. They are uh, uh, they're very nice and, uh, and amazing and expensive, but he's worth it. Uh, I gotta bust his chops. Uh, so uh, Brandon Shag says hi, Lawrence. You seen him too? You seen the no, streams? I'm not getting anything. They. Uh, okay, so here, watch. Let me hook him up, guys, real quick. Sorry. Go back. Uh, that. that. One. This is, okay, okay, you gotta take. Oh, you gotta turn your audio right off. Now. It's a LPD or Lawrence Petros design pedals. Oh, the right? you do that. Just turn uh, the volume off. Check out his pedals. Very nice because you'll get the leg, okay? And then, I don't know why you can't see it at the bottom, but it says live chat. Yeah, you should be able to see it. There it is. Yeah, you see it? All right, he We're can on. see questions too. All right, all right, let's get some cool questions going. Let's get some gear talking, since we got to a little bit of a late start today. We'll keep ironing out each issue each week. Obviously, the audio and video is fantastic, or at least up to par. We just gotta get this thing to connect correctly to the internet. And then also, I'm curious how many guys we got. We have 104 people watching right now. That's amazing. You know what? We'll keep that there. So 104 people watching. Let's see what they got. Okay. Um, so Steve says, I have no pedals. <laughs> well, uh, where do I start? Steve has no pedals. Where does he start? Um, depends on budget. But, you know, best place to start is usually what you think? Overdrive. Yep. Boss, get a good overdrive. Boss or two screamer, that's like everybody has those. So, Wade, oh, this is a good one. Wade Courtney is asking, can you use guitar pedals instead of bass pedals? I'll answer that one because I'm a bass player. Yeah, I actually use most guitar pedals for my bass. I don't use a whole lot of bass pedals. My experience is, if you're in a gig, a lot of the bass pedals are designed to sound like the guitar pedals, but not let you are not allow you to lose the low frequency that would be a problem if you kick them in for the band. Um, but it, but you can use them anyway. There's no real rule, you know, right? If it sounds good, it is good. Yeah. So, yeah, Gibson Rose said, everyone is waiting on the wrong one. I know. Yeah. I don't know how to... We're on the wrong link. Yeah, how do we... You know what? Let's see. Hold on a second. While we're doing that, just bear with me, guys. We're going to get some rid of some technical difficulties real fast. 30 seconds latency. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, modeling amp or regular amp to buy for pedals? Oh, regular amp and buy pedals. Okay. Oh, that's a tough one. Yeah. What was the question? Modeling amp or regular amp and buy pedals? Uh, regular amp and buy pedals. That's my opinion. I've not, just because it's funner to kind of one by one find your sound. You know what I mean? So. Okay, Gibson Rose says, you're on the channel of last week. Gibson, I don't know what that means. You're on the channel of last week. Oh, is that? Oh, so we're on the same stream as last week? The one with Joe. Joe. Was. Yeah, it's the software is is new. So we'll just keep working with it until we get it all figured out. About 30 seconds latency. Is that is that what you're getting to, 30 seconds latency? Or are you just uh, reading this thing? I'm just reading. Uh, Probably. Yeah, I would say that's probably about right. Okay, let's see. Okay, here's what Larry has to say. Larry says, I have a Fender Blues Deluxe reissue that I love, but everybody talks about juniors or hot rods. How come? I have a Fender Blues Deluxe reissue that I love, but everyone talks about juniors and hot rods. That's easy, Larry. It's because those are more popular by sales. The Blues Deluxe is, is the hot rod. It just has tweed and... Uh, a couple different things. It doesn't have the boost uh, function, and it uh, has a reverb on-off switch on the foot switch. It's the same thing. All right, next is, uh, if you could choose to play one famous guitar from history, what guitar would you choose? Mm. What do you got? Famous guitar from history. Uh, uh, probably one of uh, Stevie Ray's. I'm a fan. Um, yeah, like I'd love to hold number one. 
I would play the seventh string from Passion and Warfare with Steve I had. Oh, nice. Just because I'd like to check that out. Good All right. Call. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to say that. I'm good. No, I just, uh, oh, you know what? Uh, maybe one of Paul Gilbert's early guitars. That'd be cool, too. Nathan wants to know, could you guys explain what is the difference between the cheaper JoYo, et cetera, and more expensive pedals? That is for you. That is for me. I got JoYo pedals right here. Usually it's... Uh, you want to take it apart? Hey, that'd be cool. We should do that. Show the guts. Uh, usually it's where they're built. Um, the design, well, and who designed them as well. But you never know. You know, it could have been, you know, some uh, some team designed them and then sent them, you know. But, I mean, what makes it different? Is it vastly different components? Um, well, let's have a look because that I can, I can, you know. Probably just the manufacturing process more than anything. You know, they've got it. They're they're built in China, so they're tooled tooled up to do these things mass production style, and that keeps the cost low. As far as like, does it change the way they sound? I don't know. They might they might cut some corners to. Uh, okay, well, we're gonna take one apart. Hold hold on, guys. Yeah. Yeah, you look at questions. I'm I gonna will. keep taking this pedal apart. Hang on. Somebody asked me. A little earlier. Let me see if I can find it. How do you decide, Lawrence? How do you decide what pedal you're going to build? It's Chuck Shook. Put that one. Um, you know, it depends on. Uh, I won't say my my mood necessarily, but it depends on the design. Like I'll look at what I think the uh, you know, the players that I know or myself need in a uh, uh, in a pedal, and and I'll start designing something that that maybe isn't out there. Kind of like the '68. You know, that one sprang from obviously an amp that I loved, but the fact that I, you know, none of my friends were able to get friends, players that I knew were able to get those tones out of you know out of their pedals. So that's where I started. Okay, you keep talking. Hold on, everybody. I'll keep I'm talking. gonna go yank this JoJo apart. <laughs> this is gonna take longer if I don't do it real fast. <laughs> Let's see if I can find another one. How long, Lawrence? This is from uh, Mellow Yellow O3. How long does it take to build a pedal? Typically, build a pedal. Uh, it depends on the pedal, and it depends on how complex the design is. For uh, for my pedals, um, I use. On my regular size, the standard size pedals, I use all through hole components. So, they, they, you know, you have to insert each one of those components by. I, I do anyway. Have to insert each of those by hand, um, and then solder them all by hand. But typically, uh, if I have uh, a good, uh, if I've got all the parts together and everything's functioning like it's supposed to, uh, typically I can I can do you know a couple a day in like that that would be like you know you're an eight to eight, ten hour day something like that so you know you divide that up you get like four hours five hours each something like that um that's if everything goes exactly the way that it's supposed to um which doesn't happen as often as it probably should uh let me see what else if i get another one here lawrence if you play guitar what strings do you use by insomniac matt um matt I do play guitar. I've actually played guitar for about uh, 30 years. Um, I The strings that I like the most, personally, are GHS Boomers. Um, I really like the way they sound when they're brand new. Uh, and then they tend to dull down with about you know an hour and a half's worth of playing. And that uh, uh, then they just kind of settle in there and they'll hang in for, you know, depends on how much you, you play, but they'll hang in, you know, for few weeks and then you have to change them out but I, I like boomers um, I've played uh, tens forever and then just recently uh, on on my uh, Ibanez RGs and and Floyd's I went back to nines um, just to uh, make the bends a little bit easier standard tuned of course so let's see what else we got you know I will say this that was pretty easy <laughs> came apart pretty easy <laughs> yeah the parts to the JoJo were uh Easy. <laughs> All right. This is what a Joe you is. All right. <laughs> nice. So they use uh, 
slip on knobs. So there's there were nuts holding these in though. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, so you know saves labor of having to tighten those down. Ribbon wire, which saves labor of having to strip each of those little ones and solder it in. Um, PC mount jacks. The whole thing can slip in like that. I don't know if you guys saw. Let me do that again so you can see. I don't break it. So the whole the whole thing can actually just slip right into the case in one piece, like so. And then they just have to tighten these nuts here and here and these three here. And it's pretty much ready to go. Um, as far as components, they are through hole. And it does look like they use some. What does DC. that mean? Uh, um, so two basic types of components in um, electronics. Surface mount, which means that <clears throat> they sit right on the surface. They're soldered right on top of the surface of the uh, PC board. And through hole, which means that there's a hole that's drilled through the PC board. And then the uh, there's little legs on each component that sticks through. And, and then it's soldered from the backside, like you can see here. There's these little bumps. That's where the uh, solder is applied. And then you can see here, sort of, where's the, there it is. You can see that's the tops of the, of the parts. So it does look like they use some decent, uh, decent film caps. That's a tube screamer clone. It looks like a tube screamer. Yep. So is yeah. that that Texas Instruments chip or whatever? Uh, yeah, I'm blind. I can't see. Uh, here. Let's get a flashlight. What is that? Did we read it? Yeah. All it right. What do we got? It's JRC forty five fifty eight. It is a, yeah, it's even got the Texas Instruments logo. Yeah. Jersey 45. 58. Yeah, I think that's what I'm reading. Yep. Yeah, with the Texas Instruments logo. Yep. That's that's the, uh, well, it's not the magic chip, but it's the 4558. It's So it's a good chip. So, yeah. So, so pretty much basic tube screamer. I mean. So good? Yeah. Right. I don't see anything bad. Good either. enough. What are those lists for? I bought this at Guitar Center used for 35 bucks. So used 35, so. New, probably 50, 60 bucks. Yeah? Yeah, what does a Joyo Vintage Overdrive go for? Anyone know? 50, 60 bucks. Right. So. Uh, I know yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, it's not horrible, right? Uh, uh, I've got North Texas Mountain Biker says he, that he can't read small stuff either. Yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah. feel so bad then. <laughs> okay, so let's hit some questions. They got some good questions for you. Yeah. I'm going to read them to you, and you're okay. going to answer them. And let's see what we got. We got Lawrence. This is from Kennedy Clark. Kennedy says, Lawrence, how much time do you put into R&D and ex experimentation and prototyping each pedal you design? Um, it depends on the pedal, but usually, like, the 68 has about six months' worth of R&D in it. Um, I lost track of the number of hours that I put into that one doing R&D, but uh, a lot, just because I'd get it close <clears throat> and think, wow, if, I, if, if it could stay there and just give me a little bit more of this, then, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, then it would be, uh, you know, it'd be wonderful. And as soon as I changed it to get that, then the feel would alter to a place that I didn't want it. So then I'd have to backtrack, try to figure out a different way to get at the sound in a way that I wanted to without it changing the feel. So there can be a lot. Um, on the other hand, some pedals come, you know, as a gift <laughs> from somewhere and maybe I only have to put in six weeks worth of R&D on it and they're exactly where I want them and, you know, it's like the, the Coco Pelli was that way. It, uh, it came together pretty smoothly and once it came together, I never had a desire to change it. It's just, it's a wonderful pedal. Everyone wants to know, how do you make a pedal? No, how do you make a housing for a pedal? Uh, the housings are actually, uh, there's companies that pre-make them. They're forged. Uh, basically, they're a type of aluminum alloy that they pour into, into a mold and they stamp them out. And then, you know, they, then, then they're painted and you can buy them either bare or painted. And then you drill the holes where you need them to, to go to fit your design. And there you go. Put everything inside. Uh, Kittigern Kane says, Phil, do you think modeling amps from brands who make pedals have the same sound 
would you get from the pedal, the real pedal? Uh, no, but when I say that, I mean, oops, sorry. Let's see, when I say that it's a 1% difference, I mean, it's a difference, but it's not a huge difference. But, uh, I mean, they're good, but you know, uh, you know who's most famous as Boss. Boss makes pedals and then they make modeling of their pedals and their modeling is gonna be darn good, but still not exact like the pedals. It depends on how much of a connoisseur you want to be. If you want it to be exact or if you need it to be just close. Um, sometimes just close is is all you need. Um, uh, oh, hey, Charles wants to know, uh, hey, Phil, what is a good blues gospel sounding pedal? Uh, well, you know, obviously the Boss Blues Driver is a very famous blues pedal. John Mayer uses it. A lot of time, you know, a lot of people use it. Um, I like Zen Drive. The Zen Drive is my favorite. Uh, for that kind of stuff and all of the clones that follow it. Yeah, so if you problem. don't want to pay the Zen Drive price, you find the Zen Drive clones and there's a ton of them. You can just Google Zen Drive clones. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and Moore makes one. It's called the Rumble Drive. I totally love it for 60 bucks. Yep. If you guys are interested to do, to, do a do-it-yourself, there's a there's a site out there called uh, General Guitar Gadgets that has the schematic and basically a layout that you can do if you source your own parts. Bernard Bears wants to know how do mini pedals stack up against their larger counterparts? Uh, does Bernard want to know about my pedal against their counterparts just, or in general? I think he just wants to know, like in other words, the mini pedal craze that's everywhere. I mean, I got a bunch of them. Are they as good as the big ones? Uh, um, I don't know. It's the, do the mini pedals that are out there that, you know, like not mine, other, other people's, do they make them that are the same? Like the mini Tube Screamer versus a regular Tube Screamer? Because Ibanez does both of those. Um, I've heard uh, that you can tell the difference between the mini and the standard sized one, but it's pretty subtle. There's just no modability at all because they they use those teeny tiny parts inside. So for the small one, they're tight. Yeah, yeah. they're tight. Um, hey, can I answer this one really quick? Yeah, of Phil? course. Um, Larry Colkin, I think that's how you say it. C O L C U N. Uh, he posted something. Uh, says I tried to buy a 68, but got a notification that the site couldn't take orders yet. Yes, that is um, what I want you to do, since I'm not ready for that yet on the site, is uh, you can go to the contact form and send me an email. Um, and in the, in the form, just give me your name, which, uh, uh, which size of pedal that you, the 68 that you want, the, the regular mini, and then, uh, and, and then I'll get back to the, with it. That's basically how I'm handling the orders right now. You can also go to my Reverb site if you want to and leave me a message there. But if you're already on my website, just do it there. Thanks, Phil. The, uh, uh, Jack wants to know, Lawrence, when did you start building pedals? Jack, I started building pedals about, I guess it was about seven years ago. Um, I'd been I'd been building tube amps for about uh, I guess about the same amount of time about seven almost a decade and um, started uh, started to put together some some circuits that were were good at emulating the designs that I had done in um, in my tube amps and uh, a couple of local guys tried them and liked them and it just kind of grew from there. Let's see. Um, let's see, I told. Any opinions about Mr. Black Pedals? Any thoughts from Cascades Explorer? Uh, Mr. Black Pedals rock. Um, they, uh, they're well thought out, well built, uh, and they sound great. As far as I know, they're all American made too. Okay, let's see. Uh, is the MXR Full Bar Metal a good distortion pedal? Um, yeah, I like it. We got asked that last week too. <laughs> it's a good pedal. It's got a noise gate in it. It's a cool feature because when you run that much gain, yeah, a noise gate you have to have a noise gate. Is a cool feature. Um, if you want to hear yourself think. <laughs> but there was another one I just saw. Something about oh, Phil, this one's for you. All right. Uh, it's from uh, Bernard Bears. Uh, you said in the LPD review that the smaller ones are a little less, a little less tone wise or the cost. Money, yeah, they're a little less, right? They were twenty-five dollars less, so that was the idea. Yeah. They uh. Uh, wow, there's 196 people watching right now. Nice. That's pretty crazy. Welcome, uh, guys. Welcome, definitely welcome. Uh, let's see. 
Hi, uh, hi from Mexico. That's awesome. Nice. I like hearing where you guys are from. Boston. Um, let's see. Uh, a lot of you guys are talking to each other, which is cool. Yeah. What do you guys think of the Supro Drive Pedal? I haven't tried it. Have you tried it? I haven't tried it either. I need to try it. They, um, I, I, my understanding is the guys who own and build Supro now is Pigtronics. So I would imagine that's where their expertise, expertise in pedal building came from. Uh, so Pigtronics makes really intense pedals with lots and lots of controls. Um, somebody's, at, Peter's asking about the Katana series. I haven't tried it yet, so we got to hold off on that. Um, here's one. Ginger Taylor says hi, guys from Berlin, Germany. Oh, Germany, that's awesome. They want to know, Mellow Yellow 03 wants to know what Lawrence thinks of old PV amps. He has a Triumph 60. You ever worked on one of those? I have. Uh, Triumph's a decent amp. It's uh, uh, the, the old PV tube stuff is actually bulletproof. It's uh, It kind of reminds me of the trainer stuff from the same era that, you know, it, it's just you can, you can beat them to death and they just keep going. Um, no frills, you know, it's it's a basic amp, but they're they're bulletproof. The um Kennedy wants to know if Lawrence, do you build pedals full time or do you have a day job? Kennedy, I build pedals full time. Um and I also I'm a musician and I also uh, uh teach uh guitar bass and drums as as well. So it's uh music's my full time gig. Um the pedals uh, since the release of the 68 have uh, consumed a little bit more time, but yeah, that's what I do. Jay Garcia wants to know if we're married. Um, <laughs> I don't know if he means to each other or just or in general. Separately. <laughs> we're, I'm, are you married? I am. Yeah, I was going to say I'm married. Yeah, we're not married to each other, but, you know, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Just, I already have a wife. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, S Snatched Boggs wants to know a pedal you're proud you made. What's the pedal? What's the pedal you're most proud of? How about that? Uh, the 68. Yeah, the 68. So it's, it's a beautiful pedal. Every time I play that, and you know, maybe this is going to sound egotistical or whatever, but every time I play that pedal, it brings a smile to my face. Um, even though you know, I just maybe put it down a couple hours ago. Uh, I can you know plug into it like when I'm testing them before they go out. A lot of times, like I was telling Phil the other day, a lot of times I'll sit down to test them and all I need to do is play a few chords and test all the functionality, make sure they sound like they're supposed to sound, and then box them up and go, and I'll catch myself there 40 minutes later still having fun. So, yeah, that that would be the pedal that I think I'm most proud of. Svenza is saying, hey, from Stockholm, Sweden. I'm going to do this real quick. Kennedy Clark from Virginia. Melly 03 from Westport. Uh... MA, is that Massachusetts? Yeah, I think so. Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, Regal 7 was already used, is Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. MB215 is Philly. Uh, the Shamed is from England. Hey, England. Nice. Uh, Insomniac Matt is from Ontario, Canada. Uh, Gibson Rose is from Belgium. We got Craig from New Zealand. This is fun. I'm going to do this for a second. Nice. Uh, let's see. We got Ar Arian Carlson is from Norway. We got Paul from Montreal. That's that's pretty crazy considering yeah. we're just sitting in Arizona. 187 people and all over the world. Um, hey, somebody's hello from Chandler. Uh, nice. Pete Dean 6907 is from Chandler. All the way to Chandler. <laughs> what, what do you guys record your licks or ideas? Um, I'll go first. I I use a looper and I use either, I use the ditto and I have a more looper. Um, if I do that, and I used to have a recorder, but for recording stuff, I use GarageBand. What do you use to, to do stuff? Um, uh, usually a, a looper for for ideas. I used to have one of those mini cassette recorders, and you know, I have boxes of those tapes from from the '80s when those were a thing. Uh, a lot of times, I use the voice recorder on my phone, um, just because it's there. I always have my phone with me, so you know. It, the uh, the iPhones they can do you know a couple of minutes worth so if it's just getting down ideas something so you don't forget it I'll just drop that on and and play into it stop it and then go on to the next idea. Okay, so real quick I'm just going to bunch of these real fast. Yeah. Bernard's from Austria. Uh, Ron van Bellen is from Key West. We got Lassie from Denmark. We got D from Nigeria. We got uh, Roger from Florida. Cameron from South Africa. That's awesome. Okay, so we'll go to questions. Oh, we got Chuck from Nevada, and then I'll I'll go to questions. Okay, Jim, want to know if we've tried? Have you tried the Helix? I have not tried the Helix. 
Uh, I plan to. Uh, and then uh, uh, Tasso is asking about the 11 rack. I I've I owned 11 rack. Well, no, I, I don't think I actually bought it. I think I borrowed it for so long. Um, would you use it with power amp and a guitar cabinet? Yeah, you know what? The 11 rack sounded fantastic to me. I would totally run that in the power and, and into a cabinet and use it as an amp. Why yeah. not? You can get them for a song now, too. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Here's one maybe you know. Phil, what's your opinion on different custom shop pickups Fender makes for Stratocaster? From Wayne E. Um... I tried some fat 60s pickups yesterday that sounded that was in that white strat. It was fantastic. Yeah. Uh so I like the That's fat sixties. Yeah. So those are the pickups now for me. Um oh Jeff said he got a sixty eight yesterday. Very amp like. And he says to buy one you won't be disappointed. Yeah, it's a pretty magical pedal. That's why I wanted to ask Lawrence if he'd come on and do some QA and stuff, um, to answer any questions about pedals. So the Raymond's from Savannah, Georgia. We got R. Rizgi from New Zealand. Can you make a demo of the Super Amp behind you? Yeah, I'm doing the Super Amp videos. Uh, I've actually, I think I got them most done. I just got to edit them up, put them together. So that's that's definitely happened. Um, okay, MB215 says, I was going to get a crunch box, but Wampler just put out a new V2 of the Deluxe Pinnacle. Oh, I wonder if that's what I'm getting. Uh, Brian Wampler cool. emailed me and said he sent me some stuff. So I'm thinking it's got to be some new pedals. And I got from the email, from talking back and forth, the vibe that it's an amp. So an amp and some pedals. So hopefully uh, MB215, it is that pedal, and we'll check it out. I'll do a review, and we'll check it out. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, okay, Ken's got a good one. Ken uh, is asking your thoughts on the Prince of Tone pedal. Um, interesting enough, I have one right there on the board, <laughs> right? There it is. Um, and it's on my pedal board, and I do like it. I like it better than the King of Tone. And now when I say that, I mean better because it was cheaper. <laughs> um, the King of Tone, I used, the position on the King of Tone I used was the one that was on the Prince of Tone. If you like a position that's not, that's on the King of Tone that's not offered on the Prince of Tone, you, you probably need that. But I thought the Prince of Tone was great. Um... I like the 68 Deluxe better. That's why we were A-B-ing it the other night on the board. But I still I still like it. Um, let's see. Um, somebody, hey, Matt's from Kansas. Matt says, hey, which cre tube screamer? Okay, Randy wants to know, which tube screamer do you recommend for starters? I don't know, that Joey I just took apart. It looked pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty bucks. good. Or you can find the, what's the uh, sound tank? What is that? The uh, oh, the Ibanez sound tank. That it's, you can see, pick those up for a song, and the guts are exactly the same as the real tubes, the regular tube screamer. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, I I read that that it's the plastic casing, but the real guts. Yeah, real guts. The other one is the uh, you remember the ones that you could push the knobs in, set the knobs, and push the knobs in. Uh, it was like the, the seven uh, series, like yeah, something like that. Oh, uh, they, they're silver and uh -huh. square, all square and large. Those yeah. the guts you can pick those up for for dirt cheap, and the guts are the same as a regular tube screamer too. The Cascade Explorer wants to know what is uh, what's my opinion on the best fuzz pedal for sludge doom metal. Oh, I don't know sludge doom. God, I don't know. I don't play sludge doom metal, but uh, you'd probably want some gnarly nasty fuzz. The ZFX is pretty gnarly nasty. That's the most nastiest fuzz I've ever played. Is the ZFX uh, uh, fuzz factory? That thing's over the charts crazy. Um, Okay, let's see. All right, uh, let's keep it going. Uh, all right, we got Manu Ben, Manu Ben Two. Hi guys, Emmanuel from Israel. Hi from Israel. What do you think of the Behringer pedals and the other gear since their prices are way cheaper than others? Is it good quality pedals? Um, I don't know. You ever opened up a Behringer pedal? I haven't. Yeah, it's tough without, you know, it's th that's the argument that's impossible to win, and here's why. You know, if a Behringer pedal, like, let's use this JoJo. Let's pick on this JoJo, right? Why not? If this JoJo pedal was the same price as a boutique pedal, I could say it's a waste of money. Don't do it, right? Sure. It's a, But it's a lot cheaper, <laughs> right? So the, the, the answer to the question is cheap gear does not 
hold you back necessarily, right? It's a mental problem. If you if you think it does hold you back, it does hold you back. Uh, if you you know, right, having a, a, an ear that hears different tones and things, there's nothing wrong with that. But the the important thing to remember is this: it, is you, if you get an inexpensive piece of gear, if it does what it's supposed to, think of it like a tool. I always like the Harbor yeah. Freight joke. If yep. you guys have Harbor Freight, Harbor Freight's like that cheap tool store we have in this country. I wouldn't necessarily buy them to do a day job all day, but for around the house is good. If you're a hobbyist, you know, getting some inexpensive pedals, one of the problems with cheap stuff is you don't want to be standing on stage when it goes bad. Remember that. That's a huge deal to a lot of people. Yeah. You don't want to be standing in front of five, 5,000, you know, 20,000 people. Anybody. And and have no sound. So uh, so that's the thing. So if, you're pe- if you buy a cheap pedal and it goes out in your bedroom, well, then it just goes out. Um, yeah. The oh Harry wants to know if I ever did the review on the Squire Classic Vibe. I did not, Harry. Uh, well, I did. Let's start with that. I did, but I didn't release it, and that's because I have a bunch of videos that I have to release uh, very quickly. I have to edit them and put them together. I just haven't edited them to, the correctly yet. Um, what do you think of the True Valve Power function of the Blackstar ID series? Um, and that's from Arian. So, are you familiar with that? I'm not. Okay. So. So Blackstar has a, an amp series called the ID series, and here's what it does. Instead of modeling amps like Marshalls and Fenders and stuff like that, it models tubes. So nice. it's, it has a selector, and it has KT88s, KT66s, EL34s, 84s, 6V6s, 6L6s, right? And just a power tube, so you can't even really power. And so when you switch it, the amp, the solid state amp, the digital, uh, tries to grab the characteristics of those power tubes. Um, now, I've owned one. I had the ID30, and... Um, I won't say I regret getting rid of it, uh, but you know I didn't. I didn't get rid of it because I didn't like it. I got rid of it because I was trading around stuff. Um, it sounded to me right. Like when I switched it, I heard KT88s versus EL34s, EL84s. So it was a really cool amp. I I think there it's one of the smartest ways. Um, is is a, the best ways to 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 get into tubes. In fact, their logic on that, so you know, was to help educate guitar players about tubes. And I think it was a great stuff. So uh, MB215 says, Behringer stuff is getting better and better. Yeah, of course. All cheap stuff gets better and better. That's that's how it works, right? Um, I'm old enough to remember when generic food was on the... Remember when your parents would get generic? Anything brand is horrible. But now you get store brands and they taste just like the real thing. Yeah. So everything gets better. You just have to work the wrinkles out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, seems like some of us here is from NZ. New All right. New Zealand? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. New Zealand. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Nathan says he wished he bought a 68 before he moved to Maryland. <laughs> really regret not doing it. Now I'll probably never get one. Haha. <laughs> I don't know, Nathan. I don't know. Yeah. You know, they have shipping. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I've heard uh, that. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So North, uh, T- North TX Mountain Biker. Uh, LOL says, is that 40 minutes part of the the four to five hour build time? 40 minutes? Maybe they're talking to each other. It gets oh. confusing. There's so many, because there's 189 people watching. All right, so, and Peter's from Denmark. We got Johnny Carr from England. Hey, we got Kittergren, Kittergren, Kane? Kentigern. I'm, I don't know what I'm saying. Anyways, from Scotland. Hey, from Scotland, that's awesome. Okay, so... Uh, Czech Republic. Wow. Patrick's from Czech Republic. Okay, so let's do another question. Have you checked out the new Golden Brownie? It does the JCM 800 tones. I was pleasantly surprised with it. Um, that's from Mark. Uh, the Golden Brownie. Is that, it's X, XVIVE, is that a brand of pedals? XVIVE? I don't know. I've never heard of that I one. I don't know. I've never... Tr- so, Mark, to answer your question, I've, I've never heard of it. So, uh, maybe I need to try it. Because <laughs> the JCM100 is a interesting amp to clone. Because um, it's a great sound. Steve's from Girlbert, Arizona. All right, Steve. Okay, so... Oh, he says... Sorry, I got the from North Texas Mountain Biker. He says, no, the 40 minutes when you get carried away testing each pedal. Uh... No, that that doesn't go into the into the build time. Promise. That's <laughs> uh, Pritam. I'm saying it right. I think Pritam says, "Hey Lawrence, may I know what your educational qualifications are, or how you got into making pedals? Because it needs electronics 
And I think he means because it needs electronics engineering. I think that's what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. I, uh, I, when I first started building uh, or getting into uh, modifying and building tube amps, I did a lot of study, self-study. Um, I did not, um, uh, I, I didn't go through any um, collegiate uh, EE program, but if you're interested in it, in doing something like that, I highly recommend it because it's a shorter path than the path that I took. Um, mine was largely self-study and uh, a lot of uh, interning with, with uh, amp techs and, and guys who were engineers uh, showing me the ropes. Uh, I did it pretty much old school style, um, just like, you know, tr you know, trade school kind of thing, on the job training, um, and just a whole, a whole ton of, uh, of self-study and, and learning the formulas and testing things out, a lot of bench time. Um, but if you're thinking about, about getting into it, I highly recommend uh, going to, you know, pick up an EE program somewhere at, at your local community college, start there. That's the best way to do it. Yes. Another question was, I just had it. Man. Uh, let's see. This is, we'll do one more quick one and we'll do some cool stuff. Uh, oh, uh, Jamco is saying he just picked up his LPD 68 drive pedal a couple weeks ago and he absolutely loves it. Nice. Such a great overdrive pedal. Um, says, uh, Shaman Blues wants to know, what's the future of your pedals? What's pedals next? Um, the one that's next is probably going to be the 87. Um, I'm in the, uh -huh. I'm in the process right now of, uh, getting the uh, standard size prototypes back from the fab and, uh, I should have one built. Um, I'm hoping inside the next month to get to Phil and he can try it out against his mini. Um, cause his, his little one was, uh, the prototype for the little, for the little guys. So we got to make sure that they, you know, they sound and behave the same. The, uh, the big guy's gonna have a few extra knobs um, just because they'll fit and um, some uh, a little different switching uh, on it, but it's that should be what's next up. So uh, the next question came from Cameron. He wanted to know, what do you guys think about Guitar Rig 5? Have you tried Guitar Rig 5? That's the software, right? Yeah. Um, I think the last Guitar Rig that I messed around with was, um, Three. It was a while back, and I thought that was actually fairly decent for for what it was. What's the uh, What's the modeling software that PV purchased? Oh, you know, I don't know. Was it Amplitude? But no. that's but because you know PV. Somebody put it? in the comments. Didn't PV promise at the NAMM show this year they were going to revolutionize the modeling world? And then is PV still open? Does anyone know? <laughs> God, I sound horrible saying that, but I, I can't. I don't know. Um, they, um, I feel bad for them. Uh, let's see. Uh, another one is. So Garrett is saying, "Hey Phil, I'm having trouble with deciding a 212. I play mostly metal, and my amp is a Line Six Spider Valve. Um, oh, I had the Spider Valve, the Spider Valve head, um, Spider Valve head, and you want to run it through a 212." I mean, Mesa Boogies make good 212s. I mean, 212, here's the deal. Cabinets are real easy. You just got to figure out the price point you can afford. If you can afford a nicer cabinet, then you buy a Mesa Boogie or the 1936 by Marshall's amazing 212. Again, it's crazy expensive. Avatar makes cabinets. You can load them yourself. Yep. Um, Decently. Blackstar packs. makes inexpensive cabinets you can get. The EVH 212 at $499 and $399 is a fantastic buy because uh, it's actually... Uh, ply birch wood instead of particle board and it has great selections in it so definitely worth it there is so let's see it says I'm trying to find a good one okay here it is okay so Clayton wants to know looking at a bedroom tube amp heads Bujera G5 Infinium thoughts comparisons thoughts on the Bujera in general um, would it match? Would it be a better with a 212 rather than a 112? So the Bear, Bear, the Bajera G5. So I'm confused about Bajera as a whole. I get asked about this so much. And then you guys just ask me, you know, we were talking about last night, the guys and stuff talking about Bajera. So Bajera is Behringer. And the problem I have is it's not that it's bad stuff. I'm always confused because it's not much cheaper than the thing it's knocking off. Like I got it 
when Bujera was knocking off two thousand dollar amps and making them eight hundred bucks. But I don't understand the concept of knocking off a six hundred dollar head to make it four hundred dollars. Right. I mean, two hundred dollars is important, but I I don't know. So to me, uh, I'd have to look again. Is the Infinium where it's like a copy of a Black Star? The Black Stars are already inexpensive. So again, it gets. In fact, that's another thing too. I saw a lot of the Jared stuff. They're knocking off Chinese made Vox stuff and and Black Star stuff. They're actually knocking off affordable price stuff. Copies so, of copies. Yeah, it's copies of copies. So it's getting a little confusing out there. And again, it's not that it's bad. It's just. Um, it's a little hard for me to to relate to, is what I'm trying to say. So, um, Revalver was the PV software. Oh, Revalver the, was the PV the, software. They picked up, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, Sorry, I need to give credit for that one, too. Gibson wants to know, what's my opinion of the Marshall, or what's our opinion of the Marshall Hayes 40? Um, the Hayes amps were a colossal failure sales-wise. That's why they discontinued them. Uh, it's one of those things, you know, it's an impression thing. When the haze came out, I would probably tell you, I was like, oh, this is horrible. I hated the gray front. I hated the whole thing. It sounded horrible. Now, looking at what they've done over the years, I think those amps are actually pretty good. So now you go back and go, oh, yeah, those aren't, you know, right? And so I would be lying if I didn't say about a month or two ago, I was online looking at used haze he heads going, maybe I need a haze head. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, they were cool, right? <laughs> Um, you know, the truth is the haze fits into this whole problem that I've been talking about with, with my friends for years with it, which is if Marshall would just make an amp that we'd want, we wouldn't have to be turmoiled with all the things that Marshall makes. In other words, we know what we all want. We want a 20 watt JC 100 or 20 watt, uh, Plexi or, you know, a 20 watt JVM. We just want them to take the amps that we love and make them smaller. Instead, they keep making smaller versions of other <laughs> things that just say Marshall but don't have the classic Marshall sound. Right. So that's generally, that's, you know, there you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jeff wants to know, Phil, what's an amp that sounds like the 68 pedals? So when you, so when you have, so when you, so when will you have a prototype? Phil wants an amp. Oh, that's what oh, he's saying. Yeah. Phil wants an amp that sounds like the 68 pedal. So when will you have a prototype? <laughs> when will you have a prototype of that pedal? Of the amp that sounds like the 68 pedal? Yeah, remember pedal? we said we did. That's say, right. You said you that if I, I said if, it in the video. But so you know, I said it. I said it before I said the video to with with the guys we were talking. So well. Um, gonna do it. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to see how that goes. If I get any time <laughs> to to work on it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, let's see, Phil. What do you think about the pedals from Marshall? I found the We Blues Breakers and the Fiber Tram and the compressor amazing. I think uh, don't have. They don't have the credit they deserve. I agree. You know, I had. Uh, the Shredmaster, which is the England made ones, the, or it's a fantastic pedal. I only got rid of it because I think I sold it for 350 bucks. I bought it for 50, sold it for 350. I liked it. I didn't like it so much that I Had couldn't keep it. Yeah, I could keep it, you know, for 300 bucks. Um, but all the ones you're talking about, I fantastic. They were a lot of them made in Korea. I think they're made in China now, but fantastic pedals. Um, yeah, you're right. Marshall doesn't get the credit for making those. All those pedals are good. So. There is uh, Mascar, Mascarpone, Mascarpar Music wants to know, Friedman Amp versus the new pedals are okay. So I think what you're saying is the Friedman Amp versus the Friedman pedal. I like the BOD. I have it down in the rack. I like the Runt 20 more. I just like the way it sounds. Um, it sounded more, sounds more raw, like, a, like an amp. Yeah. Uh, but the BOD sounds like a heavy saturated amp that sounds mean um oh there was a cool one i just saw a question you guys are there's 181 of you guys on here and you're coming questions pretty fast so let's let's go ahead because we're gonna be wrapping up pretty soon uh let's see the next one is gibson says he will buy an amp with serial number one lawrence yeah i just have to build it right you have to build it <laughs> i'll keep you posted yeah the um Somebody want to know, sometimes you guys ask questions about product, but I don't know what it is. So I'll, I'll just kind of earmark that. So Gibson wants a 200 watt head. <laughs> the, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, what was the craziest, the craziest tube amp I've ever seen was the crate. Uh, 
yeah, blue it was voodoo a, that was 100, three, 150 watts no, or was it 300? I thought it was 300 watts too because it had, it had, I remember eight, that amp. Eight, six L6s. Eight, six L6s. Yeah. So if it had eight, that would be, uh, it's going to be 60 per pair. So I, re- I remember that. It's 240 amp. watts. I remember that amp. I just remember going, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. So, oh, yeah. Remember that, but you know, that was a thing for a while, right? Remember? Yeah. You know, I remember everybody was just trying to get louder. Yeah. The, you know? What the Marshall Major was. Uh, I remember laughing at people with 50 watt amps. Like, oh, you, you know. You, Only 50? Yeah. Well, they'd come to audition for your band and right. you'd be like, how, how big is your amp? And you're like, oh, I got a 50 watt Marshall. Like, it. oh, 50? Dude, where's your other cabinet? Yeah, where's your other <laughs> cabinet? Uh, it's funny how we've just cycled back to, like, oh, you got a five water? That'll work for a gig. No problem. Sweet. Yeah, sweet. It's just, it's funny how it just, I always wonder if it'll go back, right? Yeah, the pendulum swings both ways. Yeah, right? I would imagine. Sooner or later. Somebody's going to be one allowed, be allowed again. The uh, the pro- the best thing is this. I best the I best I bet the best thing is there's no more disturbing the peace violations for musicians. Um, it's gone down considerably. The uh, let's see. Okay, so. Uh, Blore Regard is asking, do you know anything about Panama amps? I did a review of a Panama amp. Um, I said it last week. That was the question last week. Cool guys, uh, you can check out the review. Uh, like I said. Um, Ed McMuffin's back. What's the best overdrive pedal for a hundred bucks? Ooh, okay. You can go after me because you you can. Uh, let's see. I'll ponder. You ponder. Best overdrive pedal for a hundred bucks. I got a bunch of them. <laughs> okay, let's start with a bunch of them. Tube Screamer for ninety nine bucks is killer. To me, they don't make it anymore, but the OD eleven by Love Pedals is a score. Uh, that's a great pedal. You can pick them up all day, used for $79 uh, or to $100. Uh, they were $100 new. Fantastic. What else? Uh, uh, the Timmy, 100 bucks now. Sometimes yeah. I think they're floating 130 but 100 bucks is great. Um, what else? Uh, the Blues Driver, 100 bucks is a good pedal. Um, you know, to be honest with you, $100 is really the sweet po- the sweet price for an overdrive pedal if you're looking for a good overdrive pedal and you have a hundred dollar bill you're you're sitting in a good situation because really what you're looking at is all the good pedals that are nine hundred dollars below and then all the used pedals that are 150 that are now 100 to 75 dollars so a hundred dollars if you had a hundred dollar bill you're getting a good pedal yeah you know um the so that's nothing wrong with that um Oh, so Harry wants to know what's the name of the sixty-eight of the sixty-eight pedal you guys keep talking about? Um, it's the sixty-eight drive. Uh, Lawrence builds it. It's a, I, I did a review of it. Um, where's that, uh, Harry? You can check out my review. It's uh, the uh, it says the best plexi pedal I've ever played is the review, um, and you can check it out. Uh, this is the builder of it. He's the guy who built it. Um, the um, uh, funny story. I don't know if I told the story, so I'll tell it to you because it's kind of funny. So, so how I met Lawrence was he came into the shop and he said, "Hey, I, I build pedals. I've seen your videos. I, I'm interested in feedback. If you'd like to check one out." So he gives me the box, and the truth was, I own so many pedals at this point. I'm like, ah, you know, I love checking out new pedals, but I just like, all right, I'll check it out. Cool, because I'm like, all right, some cool. But I had to do the Sam Ash video the next day. That's the one where I went into Sam Ash. And uh, so I didn't check it out. And then that night when I got free time, I checked it out and I called my buddy Joe and I'm like, you got to hear this pedal. It's the best pedal ever. And then I call, called him and told him, I go, yeah, I got to buy this pedal. So this is, this is just done. It's sold. Um, let's see. There's let's, a, couple of, a couple of people mentioning the uh, Nobels uh, ODR. Uh, oh, yeah, one. right. For that's that's a great inexpensive uh, overdrive, especially if, if you like the uh, if you like it with a little more gain, get the ODR One Plus um, uh, because it's got a it's got a switch on it that that allows it to go much higher gain, gives you a little more versatility. Yeah. Uh, Insomniac wanted to know: Do you remember the first riff you ever learned on the guitar? For me, it was Iron Man because you could play it on one string. That's why the teacher taught it to me. There it is. Yeah, and. I'm I'm just a little bit older school. Mine was smoke on the water. Oh, see, Patrick wants to know. He ha- oh, Patrick said he had a Panama amp. It was okay. He went back to the Carbon V3. Yeah, Patrick, I agree with you. The Panama was okay. Uh, like I said, it was okay. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, Simon wants to know what's the best equalizer pedal you can recommend? Any price? Um, well, I have the Mesa Boogie one, and it's really good okay and it's ex- 
extremely expensive, 250 bucks. Um, and I really like it. The G7 by Boss, I've always liked that pedal. Yeah. Uh, MXR has the 10 band and the 6 band, although, so you know, unofficially, in other words, they haven't said this, you know, they're, they haven't announced yet, but it has been announced. Those are discontinued. They just discontinued them. They're going to refresh them. So there's two new versions coming. So we'll have to see what, so if you're really no price, you're looking for a great uh, e, uh, EQ pedal, keep in mind, MXR has got probably, it's the NAMM show is when they'll release them, but they have new versions of the 10 band, 6 band coming is what I, what they alluded when they said that they were discounting or discontinuing the, uh, the old ones. Is the Digitech Bad Monkey any good? Uh, you know, that was a pedal. I fell for it twice. Everybody talks about how great it is, and it gets all cultish. And I bought one. I was like, ah, it was pretty good. I liked it. And then I sold it. Then, it, like, two years later, I forgot I had it, I guess. I don't know. And I bought it again, and it was good. Uh, but I got rid of it again. Uh, so, good. It was a good pedal. Um, you know, but pedals, you know, the problem is with pedals is they're like crayons, right? You, you know, they're, they're all good in some kind of situation. Just... Some sometimes you you gravitate to certain colors all the time, so that's what is with pedals. I have I have you know hundreds of pedals, um, but some I just use all the time. So that's just how that works. Uh, and then we got a five minute warning before we quit. So let's do a couple more questions. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> the uh, okay, so many, just funny question. I'm not answering it. Okay, so uh, other pedal, it's, uh, okay, uh, what is your view on modeling amps? Uh, you don't think we will be playing those within 10 years? Are we not trying to hold on fading technology? Okay, that's a good question, and that's a, uh, an argument, right? And here's, here's the, uh, it, nobody knows the answer. I can only give you a theory. So here's the theory I have. Um, the two amps going away will only have to do with one thing and one thing only the price and the availability of tubes if tubes become a problem to get we'll have no choice but to move away from them as an industry and as musicians okay uh, no one can afford six hundred dollars for a set of tubes in an right. amp or it just can't be it can't be done so as long as we can get tubes people are going to want tubes because they do have a sound and even if you can clone them, which we've done in the way they sound, it's hard to clone the feeling you get when you're interacting with a tube amp, right? Um, so, and the, and the answer to the question is, don't, you know, in 10 years or 50 years or whatever, will they go away? Well, no, because, you know, that you could ask the same, in the 60s, people could have said, well, in, in 20, 30 years, no one's going to ride a Harley. It, it's loud and obnoxious, right. you know, right? right? And yet people love, have a passion about that, that motorcycle you don't buy a guitar amp because it's practical so if you are talking about a blender or a microwave or a car or a piece of technology that is a tool that you use every day that's not an emotional connection i'd say yeah why are we using antiquated technology but we don't use antiquated technology because it's efficient or inefficient we use it because it's emotionally connection yes yeah. practical doesn't even apply musicians go to hell and back taking three and four backup amps on stage just to get an amp that they like yeah. so if you a tell me that axe effects is a better deal well yeah but that's the practical approach yeah right you know yeah, of course everybody everybody knows you can model an amp and and have that but you know but you don't tour for a living because you live in a practical part of your head right <laughs> Right. Yeah. A practical part of your head says, get up at eight o'clock, make money, pay your bills, take care of your kids and go home. So those musicians have a slightly different way of processing information to begin with. So um, and as long as they do it that way, we, the, uh, the the musicians out there that aspire to be that or love those guys and gals, uh, we're going to follow their lead. So there's my speech. Uh uh, okay, so Ben Vin, B, BV Ninja says, Lawrence, do you have a dealer outlet in the UK? If not, have you sorted out shipping to the UK? I have emailed you a while back, but you didn't, but you hadn't really started to ship to the UK. It was about the 68 drive. Yeah. What's up with that, Lawrence? Yeah, I don't, I don't have a um, a distributor or dealer in in the UK. Um, everything is still going direct through me, and I have sorted out uh, shipping to the UK. Um, basically just using USPS flat rate seems to do the deal now I've had pretty good luck with it so uh, uh, shoot me a message we'll see if we can get you going so 
<laughs> okay, these are good questions. All right, so I got a couple of good ones. All right, ready? Uh, uh, okay, so I'm, I'm going to do them in order. We'll okay. start with Gibson. Gibson wants to know, Lawrence, what guitars do you own? Throw some uh, guitars out there. I've got uh, one Les Paul that I bonded with. I've got a uh, uh, 95 Fender Strat uh, Plus. I've got a uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. I've got a... Um, I've got four um, 1980s RGs, a 550, a 560, a 570, and a 750. Um, uh, what else do I have? That's oh, I've got a uh, got a Sir, I've got a a um, Tom Anderson. Um, Did you get a Tom Anderson because you bought it from Jean Paul? No, actually, I didn't. As a matter of fact, and uh, I uh, I didn't. I oh. got it. I think actually it's the other way around. I think he may have oh, saw, Thomas. saw oh, my played your Thomas and, and said, "Hey, that wouldn't that be great?" Yeah, something so. like that. So that's yeah, that's what I have. I've got uh, a handful of basses too, a couple of Fender jazz basses, and oh. uh, uh, I've got a 1987 um, Ibanez Sound Gear. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, yeah. What color? Uh, Gunmetal blue. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are great basses. The oh. neck is like that. tiny, tiny. It's like this music stand yeah, right here. So small. The, uh, I call them pencil necks because it literally <laughs> feels like a pencil neck. Okay, ready? Good ones. Okay, ready? Yep. Uh, what do you think about Magic Box pedals? I honestly have not heard them. Oh, easy. I have it. I bought one. It was the Magic Box Fuzz Universe, and it didn't work. <laughs> Whoops. And it was 300 bucks, and it was 300 bucks. That's disheartening. <laughs> yeah, so when you get paid 300 bucks and it wouldn't work, uh, it kind of bummed me out, so I sent uh, it back, and I didn't give it a shot. And uh, I regret not giving it a shot because I really love Paul Gilbert's sound from Fuzz Universe, yeah. uh, that album, and uh, so I want that pedal. So I'll probably do it again. Um, the next one is, Lawrence, if Phil wasn't paying attention, what gear would you be walking off with? So oh. What do you take in the room? What I take uh, I take that green Paul Reed Smith. It um, is pretty. Yeah. I take the uh, striped EVH, and I take that nice blue telly. <laughs> oh yeah, the uh... <laughs> see, it's good. Um, Maybe okay. that hot pink RG over there too. Oh, it, it's not. It's a uh, oh, road, flare, road flare orange. Oh okay. Yeah, it's red. Well, it's orange. So it's road flare orange. Everybody thinks that guitar is pink in the videos. They always ask me about the my, my pink yeah. Ibanez, and yeah. I'm like, no, it's it's orange, but it's yeah, it's the lighting. Because they is that salmon? No, that's a no, different color. The no, this a is color. literally road cone. It's a road cone. It's the nice. same color as a road cone. Uh, let's see. Uh, another person, our person, asked me about the Squire Classic vibe. Yes, Tony, I'm. I actually have the reviews. I just haven't posted them. It's because I'm trying to line up the videos in a, in a way. So I'll, I'll make sure. Now that you guys, I know you guys are that interested. I'll, I'll knock them out and get them done. There are people on many YouTube channels that go on and on about Panama, but they aren't that great. Uh, Kennedy Clark said that. Yeah, Kennedy, like I said, I'll stick with what I said every time. I probably won't change. The Panama guys were so nice as a, as a a to deal with on the phone or, and talking to them. They were great people. Uh, but yes, I found the, the amps very... Um, and... Did you hate it? I mean, Joe hated it. <laughs> no, I, you know, it's uh, realistically, it's hard for me to hate anything. Yeah, see, me too. It's hard for me to hate stuff, but but um, no, it was not exciting. You no. right? What was? Um, the, I think I said it sounded like a gorilla. But yeah, other, he other, said it sounded like a gorilla. Amp. I thought it sounded just like said. Okay, it sounds okay. Um, a good cheap noise gate. Um, I would get a used MXR yep. noise gate. Those yep. are they're, they, they're bulletproof. They're intelligent and, noise gate or what are they? Yes, those are good. Yeah, here I got one from uh, Buck Johnson. He says, Lawrence, if you didn't make your own amps, what amp would you suggest that works best with your pedals, in your opinion? Pete from San Francisco. Um, the the sixty eight works really really well with uh, any Fender based clean. It'll it'll you can use the Fender based clean as your clean channel and turn the sixty eight on, and there's your Marshall crunch lead channel it works great with that uh it sounds it sounds great through a lot of the marshals that i've that i've put it through as long as you keep the bass content up because it does you know in order to sound marshall you have to shelve some of that off so the pedal does that but as long as you as long as you compensate on the amp it'll sound great oh yeah right yeah the um 
All right. Did you, let's see what I should, you know what it is. We should be working like a machine gun. I'll, yeah, while, you're, okay. while you're talking, I'll look. And when I'm talking, you yep. look. Um, all right. Let's see. One more. I'm going to do, I'll do two more. You do two more. We'll call it. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I'm just going to pick one. Uh, Although somebody just say you can have a dealer in Belgium if you want. <laughs> nice. Um, oh, let's see. Easy one. Paul Smith wants to know, what is your favorite delay pedal? I'll go first. It's the Acid Reflux delay. That's my absolute favorite delay. And um, right now, my second runner-up is probably the Carbon Copy Bright. What's yours? Oh, mine is uh, the old Roland Space Echo. Um, sorry. Can't get away from that one. That's the one that actually had the tape in it, right? The, oh, the yeah. two two reel to reel thing, yeah. I know I'm old school on a lot of crap. <laughs> the uh... Phil, yes. When will you stop buying boutique pedals and settle for Boss and MXR? Never. S from Patrick. I see Patrick. The problem is, is I have Boss and MXR as well. So, um, you know, and this is a funny thing because if you look at my collection, I'm all over the place. Right, I, I I'll have some expensive stuff and I'll have some cheap stuff, and and that's because uh, I really just want to know, <laughs> right? I just want to. That's what it is. I just want to touch the stuff and feel the stuff and figure it out. And generally speaking, what I find out is uh, higher end boutique stuff is nice, but maybe it doesn't always it doesn't always have to be so expensive and so nice. It could be a little less money than that. And but also too, I'll tell you what's happening every day, every second. Uh, cheap stuff just gets better. You know, it's getting to the point where it's like, it's getting tough to figure this out. Uh, it's great if you're new to this, if you're new to guitar as a hobby or as a, as a, as a musician, uh, this is the best time, you know, right? I, 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 I think it's funny. I, I hear guys all the time that are older saying, you know, oh, all the good gear was back then and it's all junk now. That could be true, but boy, the way I feel is you can pretty much buy anything for nothing at this yeah. point. And the um, technology and, and, and quality control have gotten so much better. And I will say this. I know I hear it constantly, though, that's an American thing, right? Because overseas they're saying that stuff's not cheap like it is here. Yeah. Um, so I, I, that I don't know because I'm not there. But here in the U.S., everything is cheap <laughs> for cons considering. And Because and here's why I say that so, so I don't get in trouble later for this. What I mean by cheap is there's a cheap version of everything. Yeah, right. I don't care what your budget is. You should be able to walk into any major music store and buy something that you like. So, so let's see. Uh, Joe wants to know what's the most disappointing products of 2016. Mm. Oh, that's tough. I don't know if you could do that on a whim. I could probably do a video, you know, where I where I think about it. I'm trying to think of anything that kind of just bum me out it jumps out um, um yeah i don't know i don't either i don't have anything right off the top of my head you think but i'll maybe I'll, something yeah it's, we'll have to do some research yeah i'll have to do some research that's a good question though so i'm going to save it for later to do a video <laughs> somebody's like uh, patrick's like a gorilla and he laughed <laughs> yeah not the best amps remember those okay so i think we were going to say two okay so one more question each then we go all right Okay, so Gibson wants to know, Phil and Lawrence, tell us something what you would recommend to try out. Uh, now, Gibson, does he mean like pedals? I'm going to say pedals, um, a pedal to try out. The the pedal I recommend everyone to try, at least, are a lot of these new Electro Harmonox cheap pedals that are so good. Like, to me, the, the Soul Food. You know, I know a lot of people have owned it, but if you haven't tried a Soul Food, you need to, for $69, yep. try that pedal. It's... I mean, it's, you know, you know, think of this. He's a boutique builder. He builds really expensive pedals. And I'm sure even he can tell you, watching a pedal like that for 70 bucks is, it's impressive, right? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. It is. They did a great job with that pedal. Yeah, because, you know, it's, you know, that's what's, that's what's great. Good stuff, our expensive stuff is good and cheap stuff is good. It can yeah. all be good. And I'll go, to, I'll go to the other side. Mine would be uh, uh, the Strymon, uh, is it the Blue Sky, Big Sky Reverb? That, for a, an all-inclusive reverb unit, it's amazing. Also, pretty much anything that Chase Bliss Audio puts out, amazing stuff. Other end of the spectrum, for sure. Damn. Okay, last one. Okay, last question. Uh, I 
Okay, I don't know. Right, I'm looking through. And... Okay, Chuck's got one. Okay, ready? Chuck says, my son and I are learning guitar. What is a good home amp for us to share? Um, share is in both of you playing through it at the same time? Yeah, that's tough. Um, if if that's the case, they don't make an amp really anymore. You can use the G Deck by Fender. It has an input in the, in, input in the front and the back. Uh, and you can play and you can play along music and it does that stuff. Um, that's pretty much if you want to play at the same time. That's yeah. the amp I recommend. Yeah. The only other one that I would think of is if if you're planning on not on either using pedals to get the sounds or or it would be like uh, you know a, an acoustic one of those small acoustic PA amps. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anything because they've got inputs. CD inputs in and yep. all that stuff on it. Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of uh, of of you guys doing. All right, guys, that's the end of the questions and the QA. I appreciate you guys coming. Um, the Let's see. I just want to make sure. Okay, yep, we're good. All right, I always, there was a, th right now there's 183. I think we peaked at like uh, 199, right? Yeah. That's in, very exciting. That's a lot of people coming on. I'm trying to do this every week. Each week we'll keep improving it. We're going to have to keep working out the kinks. It's uh, But we'll, each week we'll do a QA, same time around this time. And uh, for about an hour, maybe an hour and five, ten minutes. And uh, just think of questions you have every week and you can ask. We'll have interesting people every week to answer the questions. We're here for you. That's what this is about, to answer anything you guys are curious about out there and to get kind of like a forum of talking. And uh, thank you guys so much. And as always, thank you for your time and know, know your, your gear. gear. You gotta say it, right? All right, guys.